the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent unto them into the vine he sent them into the vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said unto them, Go ye into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went that way, and again he went out about the sixth and the night hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? And they said unto him, Because no man had hired us. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call all the laborers, give them their high, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they, had came, when they came that were hired about the eleven hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man, of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal to us, which had bore the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do indeed no wrong. I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is, and go your way. I will give unto the last, this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is thine eye evil, thy eye evil because I am good? So is the last, so shall the last be first, and the first be last. For many be called, but few are chosen. Good evening. I was just reading the, the scripture for the lesson today. and glad you could join us to, to, tonight as we share again one of the parables of Jesus Christ, which is entitled, The Worker and the Vineyard. Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 through 16, as I was reading that, there are several things in there that you need to know. The first thing you need to know, Jesus is describing the kingdom of heaven. That's the first thing. You ought to mark that in your Bible. He describes the kingdom of heaven because he says this, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. He describes the kingdom of heaven. He described that. The second thing you need to know is that the man made a deal with the workers that he hired at 6 o'clock in the morning. And, and, and he, he promised, he treated them fairly by promising them a day's wage, which was equal, which is, was equitable, which was right in that time. A penny sounds small to us, but it was more than that. But it was a day's wages in that time. So he made a deal with the people who went to work at 6 o'clock. Then this man came back at 9 and came back at 12 o'clock and found other people standing idle, and he told them to go into the vineyard. And listen to his word, number 3. I will give to you what is right. And then tell him what. But he told the first one what, what it was. The second time, he did not tell the others what it was. Then this good man, the Bible describes him, came back at 5 o'clock in the evening. The end of the day was at 6 p.m. He found them there. He said, why are you here? And they said, nobody hired us. They still around. 5 o'clock in the evening, looking for work. 
And the man said, come, go work in the vineyard, and I will do what is right. But when the time, that's number three, the, the last one, I want you to notice that when the work was over, he paid every man a day's wages, no matter what, how many hours they work. They got paid a day's wages. So the last thing I, I want you to notice in that scripture, I want you to notice that. Y'all need to know that you got to get a pencil and a paper and write certain things down. What I'm teaching, the last thing I want you to notice, when they complain, those that went to work at 6 o'clock, when they complain, he did not answer all of them. He only answered one of them, and he called him friend. It's in, it's in that. It's in that. It's in the scripture. It's in the scripture. He said, the Bible said, but he answered one of them and says, friend, did I not make you a deal with you to pay you a day's wages? I don't want to use penny no more because your mind strictly goes to nothing. A little wages. No, it was a day's wages. He, he addressed one person and he called him friend. Now, if I got to use my imagination is to say, it's, and I could say to you that he knew this man and he made a deal with him and the others, but he, he called him out and he said, friend, I, I did not not make a deal with you. The parable of the workers is both intriguing and troubling. It's intriguing because of the generos generosity of the employer. It is troubling because it seemed to promote wage inequity in the labor market. Modern day labor unions, which I am a believer and a supporter, a diehard supporter of labor, organized labor in America. Because I believe for, in my heart that it was organized labor in America that created the middle class in America by demanding that businesses pay a decent living wage. And because of that, men and women were able to support that family, to move them from poverty into, uh, uh, into, the middle, middle, uh, into the middle income, which brought about this, this, this revolution in America where we had people who were able to make a good living in America. And, and, and the rich continue to get, I don't see the problem, rich continue to get richer. But those that worked for them was able to make a good living for themselves and educate their children, who in turn either was in either is in the middle class or is in the upper class. It kept them out of poverty. So I'm a, I'm a believer of organized labor because they had they not uh, uh, businesses would not have anybody to answer to, not even government. So we, 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 we would not have settled for what this man did in modern day uh, 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 unions uh, because you would not, we would see the inequity in pay in this parable. But now hire this businessman, this good, the Bible called him a good man. First it calls him a man of, 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 of a, a, a householder, a businessman who went out early in the morning and, 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 and found local, went down to the local workers' pool and hired, hired day laborers. You see them. They hang around Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, he hired some that morning and offered to pay them a denarius, the normal wage for a day labor. And then he went back at uh, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning Went back at noon, went back at 3 o'clock in the evening. He went back, came there four times. And each time he hired people to work in the labor pool. Uh, 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 he returned later to town later that evening at 5 o'clock in the evening. 
and found other men standing there and asked them, why are you standing here? And they said, because nobody hired us. He said, go in the, in the vineyard. I'm going to hire you. And, 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 and though it was late in the day, the owner hired them anyway. And when the workday was over, the owner began to, 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 to pay everybody. And, and, and he, he, the owner paid the, the ones that he hired last. He paid them firstly. And he paid all the workers the same wages, even though uh, some had worked much longer and had uh, 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 worked those that some came later in the day. Uh, those who were hired first had worked all day, complained that, that it was not fair to pay those who had worked all, all, all day and those who had worked only one hour to uh, the same wages. Now, they did not complain about the ones who had worked, that came to work at 9 o'clock, because they, 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 they work uh, 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 same thing. They work, they work nine hours, then those that Work came and worked six hours, and those that came to work three hours. They didn't complain about them. They complained about the one who had come and worked only one hour. And they told the landowner that this was not right. This was wrong. He was, was paying wrongly. This was not the way it should have been. And, and, and the landowner answered them, look, I'm not going to buy this thing. Don't tell me what, what I'm doing is unfair. Don't tell me that. He said, they, they, he said, did not you agree? Did not you agree for a dinero at 6 o'clock this morning? You said yes to what I gave. You know, and then he said, let me tell you something else. How could you tell me what I should do with what's rightfully my thing? It's my business. It's my money. Plus, the fact is, I made an agreement with you at 6 o'clock. Not only with you, but I also made an agreement with those at 5 o'clock. And, and, and watch what he says. He says that when he send the others out, 9, 12, 3 o'clock, I will pay you for what is, what is right. And, 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 and uh, he, he, he made an agreement again. This is what I would pay you if you go to work for me. And he's saying to them, I, the, the one of them that watched, I brought it, brought it up earlier, and I bring it up again. He called one of them out. He called one of them out. I don't know if he was the one that spoke up or not, but the Bible says he called one of them out and called him friend and said to him, we agreed. And then I have a right to do with what's mine. Amen. It goes to show you that, that Jesus is talking about the, the, the fairness within the kingdom of God. He's talking about honesty, equity. We're talking about misusing people with it, within the kingdom of God. But the man says, but this is not fair, or really is it? We would agree that what the landowner did wasn't fair. That is, if the point of the story was about workers and wages, we would agree that this was an inequity in, in payment. This was inequity with workers and wages. But we are not talking about, that's not what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about the kingdom of heaven. He says in the beginning, he says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who hired those people, made agreement with them that if you work, you're going to get paid. Amen? If you work, you're going to get paid. This is the agreement, but we're not talking about workers and wages, though we, though we describe the title as the workers in the vineyard. We are talking about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus made it clear. 
when, 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 when he made us aware of the fact that, 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 that I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven. If you work, you will get paid. This is what the Lord is telling us. It's about God's abundant grace. It's about you getting something you didn't deserve. Help me out, preacher. Well, the workers who worked from 6 to 6 got paid for what they agreed to. The man who got, got, went to work at 5 o'clock also got paid for one hour. It was by the grace of the good man of the house. It is by his grace that the last shall be paid what the first shall be paid. Jesus was simply saying that this is not by workers and wages, but I'm just using it for you to understand that the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of heaven, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Look what he says. When, the, when it came time for payment, he paid the last hired first, and then he paid the rest of them. Amen. And, and, and what it is, I'm just saying, Jesus is probably saying that, that he wanted them paid first so the others could see what he's paying him. But the Lord is simply telling us that if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and make the confession that he did die and that God did raise him from the grave, and the Bible declares you shall be saved, whether you on this battlefield, as we says, whether you've been serving the Lord for 50 years and somebody come along in the end of their life and confess Christ and all say they are going to heaven. Amen? They are going to heaven. What shall they receive? They're going to receive whatever God got for them in heaven. Now, mind you, are we saying that the Lord will, the Lord will, 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 will uh, uh, are we, are we saying, is this parable saying that about believers who do nothing to serve God, will they receive the same reward? Well, call your attention. Get your pencil and paper, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. And this is what it says. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. All, key word in that part of the verse, uh, 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 part A, all shall appear before the judgment seat. Part B, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. That's part B. That's B, that's B. Part one, uh, A, everybody got to stand before the judgment seat. B, everyone will receive the things done in his body. Part C, according that he had done, everything you've done, everything you've done in that body, whether it be good or bad, that's, that's the last, that's number four. I'm a, let me shut. Number one, we all must stand before Christ. Number two, you got the answer. You're going to receive, you're going to receive everything that you've done in that body. Number three, according to what you have done, whether it is good or bad, you still got to an answer for it. But whether you've done good or bad, it's not the determination of whether you go to heaven or not, but you're going to have to answer for what you did. Amen? You're going to have to answer for what you did. It's written in a book. And it don't have to be written. The, the, when it says it's written in the book, it means in the mind of God that God will remember everything. God, God is not like an elephant because God made the elephant. Amen? He's more than that. His memory is greater. What, what you did yesterday, God is like it's being done today because God remembers it. What you did 50 years ago, God still remembers it. Amen? Uh, 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 but 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 what's the difference? Man will be will remember what happened 50 years ago, what you did to them, and not forgive you. But God will forgive you because of the sacrifice that His Son made. So, people of God, I, I, this is not a very long lesson, but it has to have an understanding that the first shall be last. This is what He says when He gets to Matthew. He says, uh, 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 "The first shall be last." 
This is what he says in there, and the last shall be first. The Lord says that few are called. Well, many, many are chosen, but few are called. God knows what he's doing. He knows that we're all going to stand. And, I, and simply put, there's a lot of good people going to hell and a lot of bad people that's going to heaven because they confess Christ. What's important? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. When you confess Christ, when you believe in him, when you change your life, Jesus will, because of his blood, God will forgive you of your sin. The Bible simply says, when you confess in your heart and believe and believe in your, believe in your heart, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died and that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Why it says be saved shall be, Pastor. Well, when you confess and believe, then and there you are saved. But it says shall be saved because it is a progress in work. It will work you on. And some of us, God got to work on us 50 years. And some of us, God can work on us in 10 minutes. Amen. Why you think the people come when people are dying, they, go, they, they ask the priest to go and give them the last rites. To get them to, to, I was reading a story last night that, that, that uh, reading something down last night that, that people, that the, uh, uh, before execution, they would send the clergy in, the preacher, the priest in to get them to confess, to get them to confess and repent of their sin and to turn their life over to the Lord because they are about to cross over into a world that there is no return. Amen. But we pray to you, people of God, that you did, do get this understanding. And I, hear, I hope that you hear this uh, Bible study again when you follow me. Uh, please, uh, please, ma'am, get your pencils and papers that you remember those scriptures that I give to you. God bless you and God keep you. I want you to remember, uh, certainly want you to remember 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. I want you to remember that we ask you to continue to listen to us, not only to the Bible study and not only, uh, but also to the church service. Amen. But we are open on Sundays from nine at nine o'clock every Sunday morning. Please, sir, please, ma'am, come on out. I want to thank God for our media uh, uh, representative, our media worker, Brother Joe King, and rep thank you, Law Street, for your support in this ministry this part of our ministry. May God bless you and may God keep you. I pray, this is my prayer that God would bless you and encourage you in whatever you're going through. Let us all say amen. I love you with the love of God. May God keep you and bless you. Amen.